Hey fellow fish heads, today is uh, April 6, 2021 and I wanted to talk to you today about uh, transporting and rehoming large peacock bass. As you know from my prior video, sadly and painfully and regrettably I, I lost Ron's peacock bass, Plucky. Uh, that hurt me and Ron quite a bit. But uh, I'm trying to do the best with it and learn from it and uh, share it with you so that we all learn from each other and uh, grow in our beloved hobby, hobby, hobby together. Anyhow, uh, large peacock bass, and I'm talking about more than a foot long, more than 30 centimeters long, they don't transport all that well. Actually, they transport pretty bad. In my first-hand experience and uh, from what I read and from what I hear from my colleagues as well and it seems the reason for it is that uh, their nervous system is quite prone to going into shock from stress and by saying more prone I, I mean like ten times more than uh, than your average fish that we deal with. They are quite sensitive and the threshold for this uh, going into shock is low. Therefore you need to take pretty pretty reasonable precautions to to transfer the a, a large peacock bass successfully unlike happened with Blucky. Uh, number one is, uh, or I guess the main message is that uh, the stress must be minimized. So you, any source of stress you can think of during the transport and uh, transfer uh, has to be minimized. Towards that, toward that purpose, it's a very good idea to use a lot of water in transport. For example, you can. Uh, you can transport a one or two foot red tail catfish in uh, say 10 gallons of water uh, over four to eight hour period and the fish will be just fine chances are but uh, peacock bass would not so uh, for, for the peacock bass I would suggest using five to ten times more water so at least 50 to 100, 100 gallons of water to maximize your chances or actually to minimize the stress from unstable water. What uh, stresses them is the change in pH, buildup of ammonia and change in temperature. So when you use a lot of water it helps you combat all three of those factors. What also helps is if uh, your water is uh, has sufficient carbonate hardness. Um, I'd say at least three degrees or be, or, or more, uh, because carbonate is your natural buffering of your uh, water pH. So when you have enough carbonate in your water, the pH will not shift and not swing unless this carbonate is consumed. <coughs> <clears throat> it wouldn't hurt also probably to have a decent uh, general hardness that is calcium and magnesium that helps the water to be stable as well so that's number one number two is uh, aeration keep uh, I would suggest keeping up the aeration at a maximum that you can at all times uh, number three is try to minimize the number of times you have to net the fish which means from the prior aquarium or uh, enclosure into the transport vessel from the transport vessel into into an acclimation vessel and from the acclimation vessel into the uh, final home it'd be nice to cut out the uh, acclimation vessel to out one more netting to just get away with uh, 
two nettings instead of three. I think three or four or more nettings would definitely be too much stress on the large peacock bass and they will not be able to handle it. Uh, and number four is uh, the mistake that uh, happened with uh, Plucky, with Ron's peacock. What happened is uh, I've done what I'm preaching here. Uh, I've transported Plucky very well, acclimated him very well, but uh, I should have played it safer and placed him uh, in, a, in, a, in a fish tank where I could not even fathom a possible attack or bullying. That's not what happened in the 4500 gallon, as you could, could see from the beginning in my prior video. Plucky was attacked and uh, dominated by Brutus, our large intermediate peacock bass, out of the blue. I mean, I've never had, had it happen before. None other bass cared for Plucky's appearance, only Brutus. That was the first for me, and it was, a, as I mentioned, a very painful lesson for me. So Brutus attacked him, and even though I cooled Brutus significantly by uh, scaring him with my net a few times, he was still paying attention to Plucky over the next hour. So I took Plucky out of the 4500 gallon and put him in, uh, in 1800 gallon, which is uh, where nobody uh, bothered him or would bully him. But it was too late. A day later, Plucky went into into a shock, turned the uh, flipped over and uh, in about half a day perished. The state of shock is irreversible, there's nothing you can do pretty much when it happens. That's, uh, that's fish's nervous system shutting down, that's it. Alright, so that's my, uh, that's what I wanted to share today. To recap, Use a lot of water, ten times, five or ten times more water with uh, large peacock bass versus other fish. Make sure it's uh, number two. It's uh, carbonate high, hard, hardness is sufficient. At least three, four, or five degrees would be nice. And uh, water uh, to guard against the pH shift. Uh, make sure the water temperature is stable. That's why you use a lot of water, and when you do acclimation, pay attention to, to the difference in the water temperature between incoming water and uh, the transport water. Of course, for the transport, it's, it's the, the best to use the water directly out of the tank where the fish came from. Okay? Number four is uh, minimize the number of nettings. And number five, place it in the tank where it would be free from the bullying or any other stress of that nature. All right, so that's uh, that's my spiel for today. Thank you for watching as always, and uh, I wish you better luck than uh, than what I had experienced here. And let's learn from each other and be kind to each other and uh, enjoy the hobby together better than uh, than each and one of us separately bye guys